Tallyo for Queen and Colony. It looks like he's at it again. I am the Colonialist, and this is another episode on some of the fantastic creatures that I keep. In fact, I didn't expect to be bringing you this episode. An opportunity appeared that I did not expect, and to be honest, I couldn't refuse it. So thank you very much, Ants Lou. And luckily, I had all this stuff to be able to throw together this episode to show you the journey, the first step of keeping this wonderful species. I've decided to use a Komodo Nano Tank, which I bought from Swell Reptiles. I'll put the link in the description. These are actually fantastic little tanks, so check them out if you're looking for something similar. I don't happen to have any activated carbon, so I'm just using clay pebbles for my hydration layer. On top of that, I'm going to place some bubble wrap that I've cut to size and I've pierced loads and loads of holes into to make sure that the water can pass through, but it still creates a good separation layer between my hydration layer and my substrate layer, which is very important to stop mold and other issues from occurring. To understand the time frame of why I've had to do this so quickly because this species needs a natural setup, I basically ordered them last night and they've arrived today. But I started preparing for this species months ago, it's just I didn't expect this opportunity to come so soon. I'm placing in my substrate layer at the moment which is actually a mix of humus brick and cocoa fibre and on top of that I'm actually going to layer in the red Australian sand which is all that I've got left in this tub. I really like this sand, I love the colour of it and I love the texture that it comes with. It's actually an Australian dirt, so it's a mixture of the sand and soil. I'm using the Amboy UK Twin Chamber Etong Nest. I think it's going to be a perfect size for the colony. There's 11 workers at the moment, but they're a fairly large sized ant, so we'll see how it goes. Before this environment can sustain any life, it is going to need a really good soaking. Now don't worry too much because as I'm pouring in the water, because it's so dry and it's sort of compacted, it's going to take a while to soak through. So at first it's going to look like it's being flooded, which it is, but luckily there's nothing in there to drown, no harm can be done. It's just giving the setup a thorough soaking which is needed because that will bring up your humidity levels and then you'll start to get your environment right to start adding in your bioactive creatures and then eventually your ants. Giving the setup a good soaking like this will also help all the substrate to set and form in place so when you're building slopes and mounds it's also the perfect opportunity to do so once it dries it will all sort of like set and fall in place. Now I'm going to start adding my Hypoespis Miles. This is a 10k culture which I've been culturing in the bottle and I'm just going to pour in enough as my defensive strategy. Now the species that I've got can be prone to mites and ever since my experience with the Caravara I put these guys in because the best defense is a good offense. If they do not find any food, there's no food source for them, they will simply die off and no harm will be caused but they'll be there anyway to protect them from any possible issues. I would say the setup is about ready for me to start adding in the first cohort of bioactive cleaners. These are the creatures that will help keep the substrate healthy and the, from any mold or bacteria buildup. This one is from Moss Goblins, but I actually ordered it on eBay, but now I've got their card, I'll certainly check out their website. This is White Dwarf Isopods, so it's just a species of wood lice, but they're really tiny, they just look like really large springtails, but they are wood lice, trust me. So I'm going to put in about half the culture and leave half the culture in the tub just to keep cycling through in case this species decide to wipe them out as a food source. I personally think it's always interesting to add in sort of live creatures to your setups anyway just to see how the ants react to them. Some species just are all out murderers and want to kill them all and other species really don't mind coexisting with their friends that they have in the tank. Some species seem to know that their friends inside the tank clean the tank for them, unlike the Solenopsis and the Corobara which don't care and want anything that moves to be dead and turned into food for their larvae. This next set of cleaners is a replacement colony for my dairy cows which sadly got wiped out by a species of darkling beetle. I'm not exactly sure how that happened, it's pretty sad, but this colony is from Scott's Animal Adventures which I found him on eBay 
and he popped me a message because he actually lives locally to me so I went well my missus actually went around and picked up the colony on my behalf as I was busy but uh, this is the replacement colony from him really nice colony the guy actually has a youtube channel as well so that'll be linked in the description and his facebook page a really genuinely nice guy so uh, check him out i'm gonna borrow a bit of the uh, driftwood or cork bark i'm not exactly sure what it is i've been feeding the colony these little fish that he gave me i actually need to ask him what they're called but i'm gonna borrow this bit of driftwood and i'm gonna put in some of the dairy cows into this new setup because they're just going to help me because all I have right now are the dwarfs and the dairy cows acting as my bioactive cleaners eventually I'm going to add in some worms and of course the most important a culture of springtails so again Scott thank you I honestly can't thank you enough for sorting me out with this uh, colony of dairy cows it's actually a beautiful colony and also thank you for sorting me out the setup that they came in because I was actually preparing to put this colony inside this Komodo tank that I'm now using for the new ant species. So, you know, it's worked out absolutely perfectly that you gave me that. Um, again, thank you very much. And if you guys get the chance after you finish watching this, of course, check out his YouTube and his Facebook page. Now, I suppose it's down to the most important part of this entire video, and that's you guys. Drop down into the comments and let me know what you think of my natural build. I'm just putting in some moss which I've sustainably harvested off my own rooftop because you shouldn't harvest moss from just anywhere. You can damage the ecosystem and it's quite important to leave it there. However, on your roof, it needs to be removed. So this is a way that you can reuse that moss and give it a new purpose, which is something that I actually learned while watching an argument on Facebook. But I won't go into that too much, I might just link the post in the description. Hashtag Moss Wars and two university students that really did know their thing. To a Karen who accused them of something she knew nothing about. I'm personally really pleased with the setup and how it's turned out. I can't wait to see them using the Ample UK nest which I've buried into the corner. The way I've sort of done it is so that as you look into the front, you can see the nest, seeing them come and go, and then they have to sort of snake round. I'm using the wooden piece as a feature and also as a hide for the dairy cows and drum roll please introducing the species I don't know if you can guess but it is Harpodagnos venators a species that I'm really excited to be keeping a species that can also jump about 10 to 20 centimeters as some people have claimed online now this species can sting so I'm going to be very careful as I remove the cotton because these ladies are very anxious to get out of their test tube and I'm pretty sure that I don't want to get on the wrong end of their excitement as they come out and explore their new lands. Harpignathos venator are from Southeast Asia and India, mainly found in Malaysia in the tropical rainforest. Their monogene and their size is between 14 to 16 millimeters. They are monomorphic, meaning they are all of the same sort of size and shape. The humidity in the nest should be between 50 to 80% and the temperatures should be 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. Colonies can grow between 200 and 400 workers. And one thing to know about this species is they have incredibly good vision and something that's kind of cute to watch is they get excited when they see their food move and they wiggle their gasters. I'll have the opportunity, I'm going to tweezer out this cotton wool since none of them are nearby. I can see a worker there checking out the nest entrance. I didn't actually check to see if that got blocked up with any substrate so I hope it hasn't. Or if it has, then I surely hope they start digging into it and clear a path and start to use that ne nest pretty soon going to place this leaf over with the rest of the pile just to help the uh, isopods stay a little bit hidden from the new predators that are roaming around their tank. One thing that I'll be doing with this species because they do often require live feeding they're very reactive to movement and they're active hunters so my plan is to show you guys the difference between ethical live feeding and unethical live feeding except I won't be doing the unethical part I'll only be showing you what I believe 
or portrayed to be ethical feeding. Ethical feeding in my mind is a prey item that the ants would actively hunt in the wild and would actively become prey to the species. I don't see that as being any different. Unethical feeding is when people place in a prey item that would not normally be tackled by the species and force the species to kill that prey that could be much larger than prey they would naturally tackle, stressing out both the colony and giving the prey item a horrible death. So hopefully I can put that message into the hashtag we don't approve, which is a movement circling around the ant keeping community. And if you haven't seen it, check out the video that I've put up here and it will be appearing on your screen in a second or down below in the description. I'm personally super excited to have this species. I've only just put their test tube into the setup and as you can see they are actively foraging. They're a very bold and active species. Not much will phase them and they're happy to tackle their surroundings. I put in some bean weevils as a feed for them to see how it would go and instantly one of the workers snatched one up and took it back to the nest. I've really enjoyed making this natural setup for the species and I believe they really like the setup too. In fact I asked this half Ignathos worker what she thought of the setup and she stared at me for about 5 minutes so I'm going to take that silent stare as a sign of approval because I think if she didn't like it she would have run off back into the test tube and asked to be relocated elsewhere. So this is the end of the episode. I hope that you're going to join me on further journeys for this species. I'm incredibly excited. And until next time, this is The Colonialist, signing out.